my garden is House Tyrell's seat of power. Aiding House Baratheon's claim on the Iron Throne, House Tyrell sends their High Garden pikemen. These highly trained fighters create a mobile wall of death on the battlefield, trained to perfection in their use of their pikes. Though lightly armored, the perseverance of the troops is without equal, making them a mainstay on the battlefield. Opponents can never truly count them out until all have been defeated. Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian, and in this video, I wanted to talk about the High Garden Pikemen, a recent release for House Baratheon for A Song of Ice and Fire, the miniatures game. So, this box comes with uh, six unique sculpts, one of which is a banner bearer, and then another one is an attachment that would be the Pikeman Captain that we've seen in the Baratheon Attachments 1. For five points, we get a infantry unit that has speed five, and then their melee attack is called spear. They hit on fours, and they have a seven seven four decay stat. Uh, their defense save is a four plus. Their morale is a seven plus, and they have two abilities that are tied to their melee attack. And that's go the first one is going to be perseverance and valor. Uh, this triggers when a unit performs a melee attack, but before rolling the attack dice, it it restores one wound. Now we've seen this ability on the Rose Knights. Uh, the second ability that they bring is coordinated assault, and this is uh, this just states when charging, it this unit deals plus one hit for each remaining rank in this unit. So although the fluff bur blurb sorry, seems, to th seems to paint this unit in a light that they're very elite and specialized at what they do, uh, looking over the card, their stats are fairly average in general. The speed 5 is what we would expect for most infantry units that have some type of armor on them. Uh, but 4 plus defense and 7 plus morale is like very middle of the road. Uh, hitting on 4s is also like is also average. Uh, 774 is what we would expect for a unit that has something long with a pointy thing at the end, uh, whether that's halberdiers, spears, or pikes. Um, and I know the pikeman holding a spear is interesting, but at any rate, um, when when we think about what this unit's real, uh, value is. I think a lot of it comes down to the points. Five points is fairly cheap for a unit that's performing in an average light. Uh, coordinated Assault also kind of puts them in this position where they want to be charging, much like the Riders of High Garden. They want to be pushing that offensive so they can get these extra hits through Coordinated Assault, and that'll mitigate that four plus to hit, especially considering if you're charging, you should be re-rolling hits as well. Perseverance and Valor is nice for them. Uh, it, it allows them to get, if they get down to that, uh, if they lose a rank, um, they're, they're likely to be able to kind of pick that back up and stay kind of in this zone where they're not really ever in danger. Um, there are other ways in this army to get multiple attacks out of a unit, so uh, we, we see that, we, we already know that that is a thing that exists considering we've had Perseverance and Valor for quite some time within the Rose Knights. So uh, I think that the High Garden Pikemen... As I said, they're, they're, they look a little bit lackluster at face value, but I think points-wise is where they really start to shine. So pulling our attention over to the Pikeman Captain, for one point we get an ability that can modify both uh, melee and ranged, and that's going to be Boldness and Courage. Uh, it states each time this unit attacks, if it has full ranks, it attacks with plus one attack die. Otherwise, it's treated as having plus one rank for attack dice. So the Pikeman Captain is fairly inexpensive and has a pretty decent home within the Pikeman unit. It helps crank up the the reliability on their on their hits because then they go from 774 to 877, and that makes them dangerous throughout the entirety of the game, and that's just for one point. So it's not too difficult to get them into, with, with Perseverance and Valor, it's not too difficult to get them back into swinging with eight dice, and I, I think that they're one of the attachments that seems to find a really nice home with the unit that they're boxed with. When we think about the Pikeman Captain, I think uh, in order to get maximum value out of him, I think the Thorn Watch is not a, a terrible unit to be looking at as well. Um, when we take a look at their stat line, uh, going from whether you're looking at their melee, they like I guess Thorn Watch have the ability to function both as a combat unit and a 
uh, a ranged unit. They're not really amazing at either. They're just, they can do both. So it, just taking a quick detour over to the Thorn Watch, the Watcher's Crossbow then goes from 663 to 766, and that's pretty decent for a unit that uh, that has the type of defensive stats that they have. And then the Longsword hitting on fours goes from 754 to 875, and with Swift Strike being able to run away after they hit someone and having regroup to heal some wounds when they retreat, I think that the, the Pikeman Captain pushing the Thorn Watch up to seven points feels like a pretty decent place to be thrown to, to be putting that unit in order to get some maximum value out of everything that the Thorn Watch bring to the table. So I think more importantly than any unit that I've reviewed for the Baratheons, I think it's worthwhile to take a look at a couple of the base faction tactics cards uh, that can help this unit out, only because the, the pikemen are so cheap, and if you're not trying to increase their capabilities by adding an attachment to them, the base tactics cards and commanders are where you're going to find most value because it doesn't cost you anything to throw those in there other than just finding a place for the commander. But uh, first is ours is the Fury. And uh, this just this states when a friendly unit is performing a melee attack before rolling attack dice, you choose one for each zone you control among the crown or the tactics position, you choose an additional one. The attack gains plus one to hit, the attack gains sundering, or the attack gains vicious. So with the high guard and pikemen, every single one of these bonuses helps them. Getting plus one to hit pushes them into a, extre to a more dangerous position, being more accurate. Sundering actually gets those seven to eight dice, depending on what you're doing, to actually cut through the enemy's armor if you're not getting through on the sides. And then Vicious, another way to help trying to push damage, because I, I know with, uh, with your opponent trying to prepare for a Baratheon match, if you're in a two-list pairing scenario, uh, there's a good chance they might try to tech some of their picks to try and be a little bit more uh, resilient to panic since Stannis can lean into it so hard. But if, they, if you're bringing two Renly lists and your opponent sees that, I think Vicious might actually get you some cool gains here and there because Renly, is, Renly loyalty uh, builds are not typically known for being able to mess with panic very much. The second card I wanted to talk about is Final Strike, and this triggers after an enemy completes a melee attack. For each wound the defender suffered, the attacker suffers one hit, and if you control the crown, the attacker suffers minus one de to defense dice for rolls against these hits. So the, the real synergy here is not so much, it, it's not anything, you know, crazy or profound. Um, it's really that the the four seven stat, although average, is very easy to tilt into bad. Uh, Sundering gives you a five plus arm or defense save, and that's not super great. And even just vicious alone takes you down to nine plus for your morale, and that's really not great. So if you time things properly and you know that your pikemen are kind of destined for for doom. Uh, you can set things up to where your opponent will go for them, and then you can like watch the unit get wiped out. Maybe they do six or seven wounds or something like that after panic. Then triggering off final strike, there's something to be said about having a unit that is susceptible to kind of getting wiped out so that you can use final strike to kind of do a trade. Like, like it's a bad trade, right? So I think in wargaming, there's the peace trading game is just like another level of interaction. Or another another game within itself and final strike makes sure that your opponent doesn't get up on that peace trade if you have a unit that's susceptible to getting one shot so final strike synergizes with the unit in my opinion because the unit can be easily wiped out so turning our attention over to commanders i, I want to mention uh elden estermont the lord of greenstone now i think this is the second time i've 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 referred to elden estermont um, probably more so in, I think it was the Golden Company Swordsman. But at any rate, uh, Elden Estermont seems like a decent commander to include some High Guard and Pikemen in the list. And his attachment version brings the order mark target that triggers at the start of a friendly turn. You target one enemy unit within line of sight and long range, and they become vulnerable. He also brings the ability Hardened, which states each time the enemy is performing an attack on this unit, after rolling defense dice, this unit blocks one hit plus an additional hit for each one of its destroyed ranks. So 
the reason why I want to bring up his commander specifically for the attachment at least is that Mark Target is of course you know giving something vulnerable when a unit like the High Garden Pikemen don't have uh, they don't have a, a lot of innate um, modifiers. Uh, just make sure that they can try and get some extra damage through, especially with coordinated assault doing some extra hits. And hardened, I'm not saying put Elden Estermont inside the Pikeman unit. I would really not want to put a a commander in a seven plus morale unit. But what I would say is that Elden with hardened can kind of present his unit first and take that alpha. And then the pikemen can follow up because with hardened and depending on what kind of unit you have Elden Estermont in, they should be very survivable to that first hit that comes from the opponent, so that the pikemen then can respond by getting up and 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 countering or not countering the alpha so much, but kind of just making a follow up move to kind of make sure that they're doing some damage to uh, the unit that Elden has gotten involved in. So that's why I think it's worth mentioning his commander in this particular situation. If we turn our attention to the commander cards that he brings, we get to see some other cool synergies with the pikemen. And the first one's going to be Hefty Ransom. This is a two-mode card, and the first mode triggers when a friendly attachment is destroyed. You attach this card to one enemy unit in short range until the end of the game. And when that unit is destroyed, you gain one victory point. The other mode of this card triggers when an enemy attachment is destroyed. You attach this card to one friendly unit within short range, and until the end of the game... While attached, that unit's melee attack rolls roll plus one attack die, and it gains plus one to morale test rolls. So the the cool thing with this is um, much for the same reason of final strike. If you want to try and get some extra like balancing on peace trades out, uh, the first half of this card, if you've got like a pikeman captain within the high garden pikeman unit, it's easy to kind of control what unit you want to perish with uh with an attachment in it and that pikeman captain is going to make sure that that unit does work for the long game so it'll be something that your opponent will want to try and get rid of so by the time they've actually taken out the high garden pikeman you should be able to reliably respond by destroying the unit that you have hefty ransom put on the other portion of this card is uh beneficial to the pikemen again in that they do have a chance to wipe out units with coordinated assault a pikeman and the unit charging on the side or something like that especially with the vulnerable token that elden can give out so giving them plus one attack die in in a world where we have the pikeman captain that takes them to nine eight seven or nine eight eight and that's some that's some pretty dangerous numbers and then getting plus one to morale test rolls helps solve one of their problems, which is just having that lower morale stat. Next up, we get Martial Superiority. Uh, this triggers when an enemy is performing a melee attack before rolling attack dice. You can expend one vulnerable token from the attacker. If you do, this attack suffers minus one to hit, and the attacker suffers one hit for each miss. So the 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 benefit here for pikemen that I see is just that if your opponent does have that vulnerable token and you're not able to take advantage of it at the proper time or you want to make sure that your pikemen unit sticks around a little bit, this is just a good way to try and make sure that they survive because their stats are very much not going to allow them to do that with the 4-7 stat. So giving minus one to hit and then getting retaliatory measures for being able to, like basically just having Disrupt and Counter-Strike built into one card is something that can help those pikemen out in terms of survivability. Like I said, I don't want to hammer it so bad. So I don't want to hammer on it so much, but their stats are not really something they can hang their hat on in terms of sticking around throughout the game. The final card that Elden brings is Battle Endurance. This triggers at the start of a friendly turn. You target one friendly combat unit and attach this card to it until the end of the game. While attached, this unit's melee attacks gain the following bonuses based on the game round, and the effects are cumulative. On battle round three, uh, you re-roll any misses. On four, you gain sundering. On five, you gain critical blow. And on six, you gain two attack dice. So this is, this is a really amazing card for the pikemen. You might be able to find better units to put it on that could get more value out of it. But if you're playing a, a very wide list where the pikemen are kind of some of your main, main punching units, um, every single one of these they benefit from. Only hitting on fours means that re-rolling misses is really important all the time. 
uh, especially, I, I really don't think you want to get the pikemen tied up in combat, but if you do, this can help them get out. Sundering will help them too, because they don't have that, and this way you're able to uh, get a ton of work done between coordinated assault and uh, and sundering from the, from the unit. Critical blow is just good, and then getting plus two attack dice towards the end, if we're still living in a world where there's a pikeman captain on here, that pumps them up to some pretty ridiculous numbers. I think then it would go to... Um, if you do that plus uh, uh, plus hefty ransom, you could be looking at something like eleven nine nine, and that's pretty pretty nutty for just one unit running around. It's kind of like you get to feel like a Night's Watch player for a little bit, but that's just for that last round. So uh, battle endurance definitely can help out the pikemen if you don't have anything else better to put it on. Now, one NCU I wanted to touch on just a little bit in the framework of the High Garden pikemen would be Tycho Nestoris. And uh, he brings the ability backing of the Iron Bank. This triggers once per game. At the start of any turn, you may restore five wounds in total across any number of friendly combat units. So I think Tycho is... He, he has a welcome place in a lot of uh, Renly-style Baratheon lists, mostly because Renly's loyalty uh, units typically have a lot of healing in them anyways. So leaning harder into that with Tycho is something that I think they appreciate. But the reason why I mention it in the framework of the pikemen in general is that uh, it's it can kind of be a little bit of a sneaky thing if your opponent's not really thinking about it. Um, with them having coordinated assault and getting extra hits based on how many ranks they have, uh, you could find yourself in a position where you could be really low on ranks and you're unengaged and your opponent's not really worried about the threat of the pikemen. But then... Uh, when you end up using, if you use Tycho to get them back up to that second rank, and then Perseverance and Valor can get them up to their, uh, get them up to their third rank. I guess you'd have to get to your third rank before you do Coordinated Assault, but um, no, I think Coordinated Assault. If you went up to full ranks off of Perseverance and Valor, then Coordinated Assault would mean that you would get that. Um, it's not like you do. It's not like a separate thing where you charge and then do the extra hit. It's just when you're charging, you do plus one hit for each remaining rank in the unit. So I think if Tycho can get you up to two, almost three, then then Perseverance and Valor, Valor when you're charging can get you up to that third rank, and then you're dealing an extra three hits where your opponent might not have seen that coming. So I think that um, Tycho is uh, he's a one trick pony, and if you do if you do it once, I think your opponent might not uh, might not be um, extremely that they might be planning for it later in the future but again it's just something that you can do it's not something that i think is just like completely groundbreaking it's just a nice little trick that i think some people might not see coming and as the uh the attrition and grind that typically comes with uh playing against a baratheon player goes on it might be something that they just forget about even if it's something that they're being cognizant of so i think Tycho has some interesting interplay with the pikemen um just as a little not so much a gotcha, but just a nice little hidden trick. So I know when I first looked at the High Garden Pikemen, I was very confused on what their role was within a Renly army. Um, I think that uh, I, I just had to zoom out a little bit and kind of see what the big picture is here now that Renly and Stannis are getting pretty much comparable amounts of their own specialty units. And I think what I'm starting to see a little bit more with Renly is that his lists seem to be... Uh, set up in a way where he can go pretty wide with his loyalty. Um, Stannis has, all of his loyalty units are six points or more. And uh, with that, it means that you're, you're the, and, and of course his NCUs, typically uh, the ones that he wants to take are a little bit more on the expensive side, especially when you consider um, if you're trying to lean into panic with him, taking Jacken and Melisandre is pretty points intensive. And then if you're taking uh, loyalty units, that can get pretty nutty as well if you're trying to lean into that panic game. But with Renly, Highgarden Pikeman being five points, Wardens being five points, and then High Garden or the Riders of High Garden being six, you can get a really uh, wide list. And when I say that, I mean you can put a lot of units on the table, and they're all pretty effective in general. Like the High Garden pikemen are average-ish, a little maybe a little bit below average on the armor side or on the defense side of things, but they're uh, average in their survivability, but they perform at a pretty high level in terms of the damage they do. And I think that's really where the pikemen sit too, where they're average in their defensive capabilities, but fairly high in output, even though they're hitting on fours. 
Uh, when we take a look at something like the Rose Knights, they could serve as a little bit more of an expensive bunker, or the Stag Knights could be the expensive bunker where your commander goes to do work. But if you put enough activations on the table, and most and Renly doesn't really have any NCUs that are extremely expensive that he super wants to take. I mean, you can you can leave Tycho at home, you can leave Olena at home, and still have a pretty effective list with four point NCUs. Uh, but I think with him having the ability to heal things, or his lists being able to heal things pretty frequently, or control the, the game a little bit, I think that having a wide list with Renly is almost... It, it almost looks like that's the way we're going. I'll be interested to see if there are any commanders that come out in Hero Box 3 for him that uh, s directly synergize with uh, with the High Garden stuff, like maybe Mace Tyrell or something like that. Who knows? But um, I think that that's kind of my... My revelation, at least, is like when I was able to take a look at Renly's stuff, was really starting to feel like the wide units were, or wide unit lists were where he can kind of start developing into a new space that he wasn't able to before. And especially when we're looking at taking something like the Thornwatch, uh, they, um, a wide list is something that they like to be in because you can kind of draw your opponent towards the middle where all your combat units are and then the thorn watch can go and start shooting from the side or charging from the side like they seem to be a very versatile pick of side table skirmishers that uh that i think the renly list could take a lot of advantage of once you have these like smaller bricks in the middle of cheap units that can do a lot of work so uh, let me know what you think in the comment section below about the high garden pikemen and how you as a baratheon player might be using them or how some baratheon players might have used them against you and whether you thought they were threatening or not uh, otherwise i appreciate you making it to the end of the video here and i look forward to making the next one for you